What's up? It's Jimmy from Odds.com. This is a clip from our big NBA show for Friday, January 22nd. 11-game card, a beauty card. To check out the entire show, just hit the link at the bottom of the screen. It's available exclusively on odds.com. Next up, we have a full market. Our first full market of the night, 7.30 p.m. Brooklyn at Cleveland. Brooklyn opening up as 10-point favorites. That quickly goes to 9.5. This total opens up at 228, and it quickly drops to 227.5. We're at Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse in Cleveland, Ohio. Nets are 9 and 7, 2 and 3 on the road. Cavs 7, 7, 4 and 3 at home. Nets pace, last five games, 17th, 99.55 possessions a game. Cavs 27th in speed or pace at 96.38 possessions a game. Uh, D squads just on Wednesday. Uh, Nets had their four game winning streak snapped in a 147, 135 double overtime a loss. It was their first game with all three superstars in the lineup. Durant went for 38, Irving for 37, Harden for 21, but they just couldn't get stops. The Nets have gone from the deepest, whom I believe was the deepest team in the league to start the season, to a team with a very little bench. I mean, you got Harris there. You got very little other than that. Colin Sexton returned to the lineup, 16 to 29 from the field, 5 for 11 from three, went for 42 points. He was plus 14 while on the floor. C.D. Osman played huge, 25 points, 7 boards, 7 assists, was a plus 18. And their bench looks very strong. Torian Prince, Jared Allen, Damian Dotson all hit double digits. Torian Prince went for a game high plus uh, 20. It was a plus 20 on the floor. Allen had a double-double. You know, all of a sudden you put Kevin Love on this team, and, and then, you know, you get Garland back, and you're like, oh, wait a minute. This could actually be a good basketball team. Nice underdog. Yeah. Garland is uh, listed as questionable. He might be back. But right. we're talking about a <clears> team. <throat> with superstar talent that may demand revenge. Let's go to Wham Bam to get it started, Nets Cavs. Yeah, the Cavs came out there and played their A game, man. They shot 50% from three. 23 threes was made in that game. Shout out they mind, bro. Seven of those players uh, for them uh, in their rotation had over 12 points, 12 or more points. That, that's good, something in perspective there. So the Cavs re- all around were playing really well. The defense sucks for Brooklyn, though, right? Defense sucks for Brooklyn. Maybe that's because they're not playing their best defenders. The TLC, Bruce Brown, they only combined for 18 points. I mean, 18 minutes. My apologies. 18 minutes. So they didn't even play them guys like that. On the other hand, they ran Durant 50 minutes. They ran uh, Harden 50 minutes. Didn't seem like they really cared about winning this game or not to me. It seemed like they were just trying to get these guys some run, get some film out there. Uh, you know, get get these guys out there cohesive, it looks like. This could be a revenge spot, though. So I don't want to take the Cavs. Uh, honestly, I should have took the Cavs last game, though, to be honest, because uh, we had a feeling that Sexton or Garland was coming. I think Garland does come back and play. It may be helping out this over. I think uh, the, the Nets, like I said last game, I think they are going to have to continue to uh, increase the pace, uh, stop trying to run too much half-court sets, just get some quick looks. That's going to be helpful for them. And their weak defense, you know what I mean? So uh, until they make trades, that's what I think they're going to do. So I'm going to say lean over. Nothing I'm going to take official, though. Yeah, I'm hesitant to make a move on this game either. Let's hear what Dutch Boy Fresh has to say about this spot. Nets, Cavs. Yeah, uh, the reason why the, the Nets aren't playing their defensive best defensive players, Wham, is because they traded the motherfuckers, bro. They <laughs> traded Allen. They traded Prince. Like, they made – to me, it's this is like uh, you know you go to the dispensary, you get some bomb ass top shelf Kush, and then you're like, damn, this shit is so bomb. You go right back the same week, and the shit is already gone. That's what happened with the Brooklyn Nets. Like they were money for us to be made, and then they had to go fuck around with this team and bring James Harden on. And now I have no faith, nothing to do with this team no more. I either gotta fade them. I don't know what the fuck to do with this team, but I'm not gonna put my money on them. I know that. Because Kyrie's back in the action. They had a beautiful thing going with with Kyrie and, and, and KD and Allen and Harris. They had a nice squad going. Now, I didn't like them on the defensive aspect, and it even went worse. So now you bring in Kyrie to or James Harden with Kyrie. This shit is not going to work. Like, they said they're having fun. That's what's going on. They lose, but they're having fun. What the fuck kind of days are we living in when you lose and you're having fun? 
I'm telling you right now, my money's not going on that bullshit. Not on that soft ass shit. And I love me some KD, but God damn it. Oh, we're having fun out there, but we lose to one of the worst teams in the NBA. You tell me if you want to back that with your money, bro. Not not right. over here. Not over here. Agreed. Even in a revenge spot. Yeah, I mean, this is a this is a Brooklyn spot all fucking day. But what I heard them say, right. this shit pissed me off, man. Like, like, I, and they so much talent. It's just it just doesn't make any sense to me. It's like they're in fucking Wonderland. They want to go to Rucker Park and play. It's the NBA. You can't just have three guys that do one fucking thing. You know, James is actually playing his part. To be honest with you, Kyrie is right. fucking up the situation. No moves for us in Cavs Nets. Although Wham was leaning to the over. That started at 2.28. It's uh, 12.09 a.m. East Coast, and it's now moved to 2.27. See what it's like in the morning. We move on. Celtics, Sixers is next, and FanDuel has provided us with a line because the other books have not. Other books afraid to put this line out, and FanDuel has the Sixers as five-point favorites. The money line is at minus 210. So Celtics are plus five and plus 176. But Wells, Fargo Center, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Celtics eight and five, four and three on the road. Sixers 10 and five, eight and one at home. Celtics pace in the last five, 19th in the league at 99.9. Possessions of the game. Sixers are fifth at 102.56. These teams met on Wednesday in a 117 109 win at Philadelphia. It was the Sixers' third win in four games. Embiid was an absolute monster. 42 points, 10 boards. Tobias Harris had another game. These games are coming often where he's, he looks nice from the perimeter, gets 22 points, but again, just three rebounds. Seth Curry was expected to be ready to go because he'd recovered from COVID, and that was part of the reason why I was on the Sixers. I was lucky to catch with them without Curry, but he is now probable for Friday's game against Boston. For the Celtics, it was their second straight loss. Brown goes for 26, but was a minus 13 on the floor. Marcus Smart goes for 25, but was a minus 15 on the floor. They were hoping to have Jason Tatum back for this, but he's not recovered from COVID, and he's already being ruled out. So a very questionable spot here for the Celtics, and I want to go right back to the Sixers, but we know the Celtics play with a lot of heart. and something we've always questioned about the Sixers. Let's go with Dutch Boy Fresh to get us started here. Celtics, Sixers. Yeah, I ain't going to lie, Jim. The, uh, talking about Brooklyn gave me a cramp, bro. But, yeah, uh, <laughs> they, they gave me angry, man. But I didn't have I didn't have a play on this game anyways because of what's going on. But you already know it's either, it's either Boston or nothing. But uh, yeah, let's, pass, <laughs> let's pass it to Wham Bam. I think with Seth coming back with – a very clear idea of how to play Boston without Tatum out there. I mean, they get no scoring from their front court now. I think I might go right back to the well with the Sixers at minus five. Let's see what Wham has to say, Celtic Sixers. Now, this is very interesting. Like my guy said, it was very fortunate to cash that uh, Sixers last game, man. The the Boston Celtics uh, led by nine points at this game. They all they they out um they had seven more re uh, turnovers though seven more turnovers and seven more free throws that that right there could have easily won you the game just tighten up those two things right there so they could have easily won this game but the flip side of it like you said MB was a monster scoring twelve of 19, 63 percent from the field and there were no help to be found six players that were playing with them. They scored 11 for 34, and that was right. Ben Simmons, Thibel, Shake, uh, Shake Milton, Cop, uh, Cosma, uh, Maz, I'm sorry, Maxi, and Howard. Those guys were nowhere to be found. Now, Hop Harris did play well, but he shot one for five for three, like Jim alluded to. He's still trash from the deep. You know what I mean? He's not good there. But getting Steph Curry back, it does give me an indication that this is the play, and I'm pulling it right there with you, bro. I'm going to take the, Celt uh, the Sixers as well. I seen that four and a half. Hopefully we could get that, but if not, that's it's all gravy. Yeah, I can't get that uh, as of yet, but I can get you the. Let me just refresh Circa. See maybe if Circa could come in and help out. Still, the offshore is very hesitant to put out lines, so no, I can't get you that. But I can give you the five 
That's have cool. FanDuel, which I think is fine. I, I'd be if I can get I Bet three sixty five is not put out. And let me let me just double check that. Yeah, I stayed yeah, off the not- Remember, I mentioned that that I stayed off that though because it was like over thirty and a half minus one hundred eight. I believe was the number, so I didn't I didn't jump on that. I did stay off that. But this is this is perfect matchup for MB. Like I mentioned before, last show there there's nobody on that Boston team that can uh, that can handle him. He had thirty eight at the end of three. So as long as you're willing to lay the juice, and if you got enough balls to go over thirty and a half, like like I'm with Jim, I really don't like to lay anything over twenty nine and a half. Uh, but I mean, he had 38 at the end of three, like I just mentioned. Yeah, no, I hear that. Uh, you mentioned it on the Wednesday show. Seth that- Curry's coming <laughs> back to the flavor here. You hear me? You yeah. Me? yeah, we can. Oh, my we can apologies. Hear you. My apologies. Yeah, we can hear you. Man. Good. Yeah, <laughs> Seth back well, in action. Apologies. All right, so Wham's on the Sixers. Sixers minus five. I'm going to move on the Sixers. Dutch is going to stay off 